I wanted to show you this build that we've been doing over this time off over the Christmas period. Um, we're between two movies. Uh, we're just on our way back to, to finish doing a live musical after the actors' strike was resolved. And then straight after the live musical, we're straight into uh, a normal narrative, non-musical movie, which is going to be on location. And we've used the time off to really update the cart, to do a number of things that I've been thinking about doing for a couple of years. Um, how to integrate Nexus, which is obviously an exciting new product from Sound Devices, into the cart. How to also upgrade our Zaxcom radio system from RX12 to RX8, specifically because we really have gone hard down the Dante route now. Um, and I just really wanted to show you how we've done this quite personal build and why we've done it. One of the things that we need to talk about is the fact that my driving force right now is to just be completely and utterly digital. I started moving onto digital boom microphones a number of years ago with the Sherp Super Seamit. I've been very, very fortunate that Helmut at Sherps has asked me to beta test, amongst other people, the CMD. The CMD is effectively an analog to digital uh, preamp, which means that instead of using a CMC1, which is a fantastic product, or a CMC6, which obviously keeps the audio in the analog domain until it reaches the sound cart, it means that we can get into the digital domain on the boom pole and that directly after the capsule, which of course is our favourite MK41, we exchange from analog into digital within that CMD uh, preamp and we send digits either down an AES cable or down an A20 uh, boom transmitter or even down the uh, Zaxcom 743 transmitter. We've got a choice of going either way depending on what our actual requirement is that day. So we're trying to keep digital on all of the boom microphones. We are keeping digital on all the boom microphones. Um, our, our, uh, our move into the Nexus has allowed us to go completely digital with our radio mics. We've had a number of fantastic years with, uh, with the Electrosonics venue system. You know, I've I'm a, I'm a, been a great fan of the venue one and it's been fantastic, but it was time to move into, a, into, a digital, uh, into the digital realm with our radio mics. And the reason why I chose Nexus is because it makes so much sense because we're using a sound devices Scorpio. Why the sound devices Scorpio alongside our Diva 24? Because we need that many tracks when we're shooting musical. Um, you know, that was what first enticed me to move to the 32 tracks. I needed that amount of tracks for the sort of work that we were doing. And what else can I tell you? Obviously, it's, it's a wonderful thing to have Cedar built into the machine. It's a wonderful thing to have the, the Dugan Auto Mix built into the machine. Um, but we're still working with the Zaxcom Diva alongside that Scorpio for a number of reasons that I'll talk you through. So we're kind of taking um, what I think are the best qualities for my workflow from each manufacturer and we've built a super system, we've kind of turbocharged a cart and built what I think for me is, is a fantastic unique system. And by the way, we've still got some Electrosonics racks on the cart for a number of reasons because every now and then there's going to be a situation where you can't beat 250 milliwatts and I, and I certainly don't want to throw that ability away. So I'm really seeing myself as if you like uh, a football team manager who's playing his his best athletes on the field and putting the right uh, the right piece of kit on the wing, the other correct piece of kit in defence and the other correct piece of kit as a striker. Um, let me talk you through it. I'm really excited about it. This is the first day we've really had it up and running on a film set. So let's first of all talk about, I'll move this chair out of the way now, let's talk about uh, this cart here. So we've got our our sound device is Scorpio. We've got our Zaxcom Diva 24, um, which is a fantastic machine, um, which allows us to do some stuff with the Scorpio, which if I didn't have both machines on this cart, I wouldn't be able to achieve that. We've also got this absolutely brilliant RX-8 made by Zaxcom, um, which is a Dante unit. 
And what this system is allowing us to do now is everything's communicating via AES and Dante. And in fact, Maddie, but we'll move on to Maddie in a moment. So the first thing that I should comment on is that the Diva 24 gives me as many AES 42 inputs as I want to use. Um, it's, I think there's eight AES 42 inputs and we're using three at all times for our three booms. We are absolutely committed and ready to use three booms in the AES 42 domain. And in fact, we don't use 48 volt booms anymore. We're either using Sherp Super Seamit or we're using the Sherp CMD and we can go to, to three booms you know, immediately. They're, all of the routing's done, we're ready to go. Um, the other thing that we're able to do by mating the Diva 24 to the sound devices Scorpio is, the Diva 24 has got a very interesting, uh, a, a very interesting ability. And that is that ISO tracks don't require just one input. You can put more than one input to an ISO track. So effectively you can create, and I know that this is a, a misnomer if you like, but you can create a mixed track, which is an ISO. And what that means is, and this is really exciting, it means that when my boom operators decide that it's a radio boom shot, they can literally unplug their cables, they can plug in their transmitters and I don't have to reroute anything on the cart. I don't need to uh, change any of the routing. I don't need to change the faders that I'm using. The only thing I have to do is to change the digital gain. Because of course, if we're working down a cable, then I'll be putting the gain in at the machine end on the Zaxcom Diva. If we're working on a transmitter, of course that gain, that plus 20 dB, would go in at the, uh, at, at the transmitter end. So effectively, what that means is, I personally feel that one of the reasons why radio booms are overused, and that's my opinion, is because it can be, it can be daunting thinking, well, if we start on cables, what happens if we suddenly have a radio shot and we suddenly need to go to radio booms. We're going to be rerouting. We're going to be, ha you know, we're going to be changing the faders that we're using, the tracks that we're using. So let's just make a decision now that we're going to go radio boom all day. The wonderful thing about this system is we don't need to make that decision. We can go on cables where it's appropriate because the change onto radio booms is as simple as unplugging the AES cable and plugging in the AES 42 transmitter. It's really, really flexible. And what that means for, for me is, it means that I can do more work on the, ra on the cables and only go to the radio booms when I think we require it. When we've got a tricky steady cam shot or when we've got uh, a, a boom operator in a position who potentially can't get a cable because there's no mouse hole through the set and uh, the cable would be in shot, then it's a very quick change onto a radio boom. So effectively, this system means more cabled booms for me, which is great. Um, Okay, so that explains what's going on up at the top here. Um, let's also show this beautiful control surface for the Nexus, which we will start talking about in a minute. And of course, over here on this iPad, I've got the sound devices remote so that I can be, um, so that I can be dealing with the, uh, with the metadata rather than having to run the metadata inside the, uh, the, inside the Scorpio. And then if we come down to the bottom here, let's have a look at what we've got here. Well, first of all, let's come right down here. That I must give a shout out to Max at, uh, at Bat Country Batteries. This is a new Mark III Bat Country 150 amp hour Peli battery. Um, you know, I don't need to tell you guys 150 amp hours is really, really powerful. You know, it'll run my car all day and then some, so I'm not having to worry about running out of batteries. Um, we're still using the PSC PowerMax Ultra power distribution platform. It's arguable, we probably don't need to. Max could have put enough outputs on this if I'd have required them, but I like this. It's never let me down. Um, it's got 12 outputs. You know, it just gives me real peace of mind and security. So let's unplug, and this 
This box here we've reduced the size of because we've obviously reduced the amount of Electrosonics venue racks that we use. And so this has actually gone from uh, a five to a three. And let's have a look at what's in there. So we've got our Dark 16, 16 channel in and out Dante interface, um, which allows us really to interface all of this equipment with our Pro Tools, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But I've also still got these two Venue One racks because they are fantastic bits of equipment. One of the racks, four of the channels, is for my Crew Comms. My Crew Comms is a mixture of Zaxcom and Electrosonics. They are receiving on Zaxcom URX 50s and URX 100s, but the transmission back to me is on Electrosonics SMDBs, um, which means that we, again, we're just choosing the, the best of both worlds and we've really got a, we've got a great comm system for the, for the team. And what I've got up here is I've got a Venue One rack, um, which of course would run uh, eight, uh, uh, sorry, six receivers. And that means that if I need to, if I suddenly needed to go 250 milliwatts, if we had a really, really potentially tricky shot to do, which just required incredible range, then I'd be able to, to go back to that analog radio system and really create something with huge, huge range. Um, it's peace of mind for me. It's a piece of equipment that I've been using for the last 15 years. I know exactly where its limitations are. And by the way, the limitations are, uh, aren't are many. You know, it, it really does what it says on the tin, which is fantastic sound quality and extraordinary range. So that's there so that I've got it on, on the cart because why not? You know, it's, um, it's worth having there just in case we require it. So as we move up the trolley, of course, we're working on a CL16. Um, not much I need to talk to you about that. Uh, we've got three monitors here for three different cameras if we needed to. And right up at the top here, this is uh, just a little laptop that we've got that, that, that obviously is how we control our Dante. Um, okay, come over here. So the Nexus, really excited about this. I've decided that I wanted to offboard the Nexus. I'm not saying that we're always going to offboard it. Um, in fact, when I said that we're at the beginning of this film, I said that we're going to go onto a movie which is all location work. We're going to be on the streets of Bangkok. And at that point, actually, the Nexus will, will come back onto the main cart and uh, it will live there. But during the, the, the end of this uh, musical, this live musical that we're shooting, where we're studio based, I really wanted to get to know the Nexus. I wanted to get to know the A20s and what they could do, where the range limits were, um, if there are any. And so, so for that reason, I really wanted to get the, uh, get the, the sound devices bow ties onto the set with my team and, uh, and give the, 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 the system the best reception possible while we learn um, where, it, where the limits are. And so what we've got here is we've got a Zuka cart, which has been uh, made by uh, Eric Bellew at, at Cannibal Industries and Tone Messer. So thank you, for, thank you guys. It's a, it's a great little Zuka cart. It's, it's got a number of, of upgrades off a standard Zuka, Zuka cart. And this is now our Nexus cart. In the bottom here, we've got another Bat Country uh, battery which is running 60 amp hours, which as you know, will run this Nexus and the, and the other equipment that I'm about to talk you through for, for a couple of days, two or three days. And, um, and so what we've got here is we've got that and it comes up to the Nexus. There's our Nexus. Now we'll never have to play with this Nexus as a controller because everything is being run by Nexlink. So here we've got the our, we, we've got our router, which is giving us a private Wi-Fi, uh, a, a private Wi-Fi channel, which only runs 
uh, which only runs Nexus, and it allows us all, all of my team on either iPads or iPhones to be able to manipulate the A20 packs and manipulate the Nexus. We can all work together on that, you know, whether we're naming who's wearing what radio mic or whether we're turning the power up from two milliwatts to 10 milliwatts or whether we're in fact uh, auto assigning frequencies, you know, all of that can be done. No one actually ever needs to touch the Nexus and that will have obviously a nice plastic cover over it to keep it out of the weather. Um, the reason why this Wi-Fi router is a little bit away is because despite the fact we've got it running on five gigs, I don't want it sitting right on top of the Nexus because right here we've got these Nexus uh, Nextlink, sound devices Nextlink uh, outputs, which, which are on 2.4 gig, which actually communicate uh, to the A20s. And so what happens is our iPads and iPhones communicate with the Nexus via the Wi-Fi router and then the Nexus sends our commands to the A20s um, via the Nextlink system, uh, which is on 2.4 gigs. Down here, of course, if we look down here, we've also got uh, an ambient, let's just pull that out, we've got a nice little ambient nano locket box, which is picking up time code from our, um, from our master time code box uh, made by ambient on the cart. And that is, of course, putting time code straight into the Nexus, which means that our A20 transmitters are always jammed with time code. They'll always be recording. So if we did need to auto conform anything straight from the internal recording cards within the A20s, we'd be able to, we'd be time code locked. Very excited about this. We can auto conform to the CSV file, which is, uh, which is made by the Scorpio, the sound devices Scorpio. So that's a really, really interesting and exciting step forward, I think, that when, if we did have to auto conform anything, um, it would be very, very simple for post-production to access that. It would still have the relevant time codes ins and outs from our main Scorpio sound sheet. We would basically create uh, a complete polyphonic file that is a mirror of uh, the polyphonic file that we recorded on the Scorpio, but it would have the internal recording medium from the, from the, the A20 transmitters. Okay, let's cover that up there. And of course, in the side here, we've got a nice iPad. Now this iPad is so that my guys on the set, let's just see if this comes straight up, it may do. Um, so there you go, straight away we're in there and you can see that that could be on the top of the, on the, top of the bag here on the set. We'll have that Velcroed on there. And what that means, it means that my boom operators, my first ASs, aren't having to go into their pocket for an iPhone, switch their iPhone on. Um, this will be on the set with them. And if they want to manipulate anything on the A20 transmitters, they want to power them down, they want to sleep them, they want to save some battery life, this, uh, this iPad will be there on the set with them, um, with the cart. So if we, before we move on to, on to anything else, we're obviously, this is Dante between these two, uh, these two carts. And if we look up here at these, at these aerials, everyone always says, why so many aerials? Um, I don't like looping through aerials. I don't like losing gain. I like to stay off powered aerials as well. I'm quite particular about how I run my radios. And so what we've got here, of course, right now on this new Nexus system, we're using sound devices, bow ties, because they're on me. Uh, they don't require any power. We've got very, very short, uh, very high quality cables there. So that we're not, we're not losing anything. I think those cables are four meters long. We're not losing any, anything down there. That will be on the set. What we've got back here is we've got the ability for our Zaxcom system to work through Zaxnet there so that I can change settings on, uh, on my 743 transmitters should I require myself to. Now, we've also got these Wizicom, uh, these Wizicom sharks fins. What they're actually doing up there is they are right now, they're not working in the active domain, they're passive, and they are there to receive any electrosonics that we decide to use. However, when we do put our Nexus back onto the production cart, we're going to not be using 
the sound device's bow ties. Because I'm going to need a little bit of extra range, I'm going to be using the Wizicoms specifically, not because I need to amplify the signal, because I'm still only going to be using 4 meter LMR240 low loss cable, which as you know, guys, we're not going to lose any, any, any signal down those cables. But what I do, what it does excite me about the Wizicoms is that they're very directional and also that we've got this hard filter so we can tune them to only be picking up the band that we decide we're going to use the Nexus on and in fact sound devices have done a great job of, of collaborating with Wizicom so that can all be uh, all of the tuning uh, on the filters on those Wizicoms can actually be dealt with on the iPad uh, as part of the Nexus software so that I don't have to pull those uh, those shark fins down and start fiddling with them themselves um, it's really, really flexible that sound devices have allowed the Nexus software to be able to communicate with the Wizicom Sharks fins. Okay, so now we should talk a little bit about the fact that we're in the musical domain at the moment and that we've got Pro Tools running. We are using MADI between Pro Tools and our sound cart instead of Dante. One of the reasons is, is because often on the sort of musicals that I do, Pro Tools may need to be more than 75 metres away from the, the, the production sound card. A lot of the time we're only six foot apart, but there are some situations where I need Pro Tools to be with the director who's in a completely different place. Um, so this gives us the flexibility, you know, really love Maddie. So what we're doing is we send to Maddie here, and then we convert on the back here using these Glen, this Glen Sound box, we convert uh, Maddie into Dante. And that allows us to go really as far, I think we've got about, we've got about half a kilometer of Maddie cable. Um, and, we've done, and we've done some really, really uh, long cable runs between Pro Tools and Production Sound before. Um, I, think we've, I think we've done actually half a kilometer and been successful with it using Maddie. So, now we move on to this Pro Tools cart, which again, I've got to give a shout out to, um, to Erster, to Stuart at Erster Cart, who has now retired, but built these fantastic carts. You know, look, there's a lot of really, really smart mini carts on the market. And I've got so much respect for the, the way that the market's changing and going smaller and the way that people are starting to use mini carts. I just can't go that small at the moment because of this huge amount of firepower that I've talked to you about. So, but what I never wanted to do was to actually go into a 19 inch rack mounted cart because it just gets so big and unwieldy. Now, I know that this cart looks big, but considering what it's doing, it's actually pretty lightweight and one person can get this up and down a set of eight steps without any help whatsoever. If it's more than eight steps, of course, I'm gonna have my second AS come and help me get it up and down the stairs. But I can move pretty fast with this. I can tip it on its back wheels. I can jog along with it if I need to. Um, it's, a one, it's a one person move. And so what I've got here is what, is what the Americans call a Euro cart. Um, you know, it's somewhere between a mini cart and a big boxed 19 inch rack mounted cart. That's what I've always done. I'm sure if you've been following me for a while, you've seen this in its embryonic stages get a little bit bigger every year, and this is where we are now. And actually, this, uh, this version of it is smaller and lighter than where we were before we started this new build. As I said before, we've, we've almost halved the amount of 19-inch rack-mounted gear on the bottom there. Um, we've only got one battery. We don't need to be plugged into mains. You know, this is, considering the amount of firepower that we've got here and what we can achieve, it's incredibly small and light. And we've done the same thing with Pro Tools. You know, we've, I didn't want Pro Tools to be working off a mag liner. I didn't want Pro Tools to be, uh, to be something that four people had to move around the set. I wanted it to be pretty self-sufficient. And this is what we've done by building this Erster cart. Um, this Erster cart, which, which, which runs our Pro Tools rig, which again is, is, is pretty special. I mean, just to, 
I don't really want to go into my complete musical workflow because we'll be here all day. But one of the things that I say is if we go in here, this is what I'm getting from Pro Tools. Um, and in fact, let's arm these tracks because I should arm them because we're shooting in a couple of days. So keyboard, live keyboard, effects, mono music, music time code, music left, music right, vocal, click. Okay, so we're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tracks from Pro Tools at all times. It's not just a, a mono music mix the way we used to do it 15, 20 years ago. So moving on to the Pro Tools cart, I'm now going to hand you over to our fantastic Pro Tools operator, Josh, who can talk you through it a bit. <clears throat> so this is Simon's Pro Tools cart. Um, it's based on a foundation using RME products, specifically because of how well they use the MADI cabling and Simon definitely likes to have that flexibility of having the longer MADI runs. Um, we have 16 uh, line out mixes going on at any given point and then as like Simon mentioned the eight mix is going to him via Dante. Um, down here we've got our 16 ins, 16 outs um, on these patch panels uh, all coming from the Prodigy MC which is fantastic that gives us um, 64 stereo channels if we want it. Um, uh, powered on a 100 amp hour battery so which lasts six to eight hours in the field so if we're moving we know we've always got that safety kicking in. And that battery is a Simon Bishop battery. We should name check Simon. Um, that's a beautiful battery that he built, I think, along with Stuart, Stuart uh, Erster at the time. Um, and that's still running. You know, we got that a number of years ago and it's still strong. Absolutely Go on, Josh. amazing. Never let me down. And the uh, output on the eXpert Pro reader as well has always been precise. Um, and yeah, everything we do, we do using Total Mix, which is amazing. So Total Mix allows me to sum everything that I receive into the trolley. So I can, at any point, because of the fact we're using Dante, um, jump on and just steal any of Simon's 32 tracks that he's got. I can pull them back into my trolley. I can add reverb. I can send them to a cast IM um, and, and anywhere we want to. Um, and we do that using these aerials. So we've got three cast frequencies on, on this uh, job at the moment. Um, we've also got uh, a paddle up there, which is actually receiving the venues. The venues are so that I can receive uh, six channels uh, for the VOG mic. So I can put the first AD or the director directly into a, a cast member's ear, or I can put them through a speaker and have that flexibility to do that. We've also got the direct out um, Dante box here as well, which means if we wanted to, we could convert to Dante right on the trolley and then and run that um, straight into via Dante. Um, here we have a uh, another stereo transmitter. This is a, a stereo transmitter we use for the music team. Um, the reason it's stereo is we split the feeds live and pre-record and it allows them to look at their sync and, and have, the, have the knowledge that they need to be able to do and check what they need to check. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. It's an amazing trolley. It's extremely powerful. I mean, it's capable of twice as much as we do with it, but that's how Simon likes to roll and make sure that that's always built in. Um, yeah. So, <clears throat> just gonna do some, some shots for you just Again, to just look at what's going on here. <clears throat> so guys, thank you. I, I really just wanted to talk you through this, as I said at the beginning, because I'm super excited about it. Um, I really feel like we've taken the best that is on offer right now for production sound and created a very, very unique super system that gives us incredible flexibility. And, uh, you know, thank you to Sound Devices. Thank you to Zaxcom. Thank you to Electrosonics. Um, thank you to Sherps. Thank you to DPA. Um, you know, you guys all rock and we're absolutely getting great results from your equipment. And all I can say really is I'm excited to start using this system. This is a massive step forward for us. Um, as I said at the start, this is about keeping everything in the digital domain.
having everything talking in digits so that we don't have any generation losses anywhere in the line and really giving the highest quality tracks to sound post and the uh, not just the highest quality tracks but giving them ultimate flexibility to be able to uh, to, to to have raw ISO tracks that are as high quality as possible. Thanks guys.